What's up guys, long time no see, uh, because I've been working on this beautiful six in one universal trim router jig with my friend Tamar Hanna over at 3x3 Custom. We just released that this morning, I'll link it below in the pinned comment. Super cool, fits nine of the most popular router bases out there, and we worked on it for over a year, so I think you'll really, really like it. But today we're gonna talk about magnets. Recently, we released a blog over on our website about how to use magnets in the workshop. It was super popular, so I wanted to bring it to video form and share with you some of the comments we got and all of the ways that I use magnets in the shop and also how to install them. You know, I used to build the dovetail jigs by hand. Each one has eight magnets, so I've put in a ton of magnets in my lifetime. So I have a ton of uses for them. We've got magnets all over the shop. I'm gonna show you all the ways we use them. So let's come on into the bench. These are neodymium magnets. We used to use these three millimeter by nine millimeter, then we upgraded to these 10 millimeter by five millimeter. You wanna be really careful when you're buying magnets so you're actually getting neodymium. If you go on Amazon, they coat the ceramic magnets in like this silver coating that makes it look like rare earth magnets, but they're actually not. So you wanna make sure you read their reviews or you can buy the same ones that we use in our dovetail jigs on our website at camtools.com. I'll leave a link down below. These are N52s. Magnets are rated on an N scale and they go from about N30 to N52. One thing to note about magnets is you wanna make sure you don't keep them in your car. Heat can be bad for them. Anything from 80 C to 176 degrees Fahrenheit will cause magnets to lose their magnetism. And it's actually kind of funny. They work better when they're colder. We make the dovetail jigs in an open top silicon mold. So we have to make sure that the material we use stays below that 176 degrees Fahrenheit, or 80 degrees Celsius. These are really strong. This is like the fifth take we've done this because every time I take this out, mayhem breaks out here. So these have 7.6 pounds of pulling pressure. We've learned our lesson. We're gonna close this box and move it off to the side here. Look at how strong this is. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Each one of these has 7.6 pounds of pulling pressure. That means one magnet can lift up a newborn baby. I mean, this is absolutely incredible how strong these are. So over the years, installing dovetail jigs, the way that I found, oh, that's another thing to be wary of. Magnets are very brittle. So if you let them snap into each other, they can chip. So here's a little chip from one of the magnets here from Oh, there it is from all the takes we've done. When we sell them, we keep them in these plastic tubes and I highly recommend keeping them in there just for safety. So what I've found is getting a putty knife and getting as many magnets as you need on the putty knife at the same time will really help you and it'll help you install them. So I've already drilled my 10 millimeter holes, but I'm gonna show you how I install magnets and then we're gonna go through all the ways I use them in the shop. So what you wanna do is take a putty knife. Sometimes if it's kind of a thicker piece of metal, you can kind of sand it down to a point a little bit and you just take off as many magnets as you need to install. And this does two things. One, it keeps them all in the same polarity. So you wanna make sure that when you do it, you're, they're not flipping over and just get it on your putty knife and bring it back down. Same thing, that one flipped over. So we're just gonna make sure, there we go. And you just get them on there like this. And then what you can do is just push the ones you're not using out of the way. Keep the one that you wanna to install towards the top now, installing magnets, obviously the closer to the item that you're using, the stronger the pulling force is gonna be. So you really want them to be flush or just below flush. And I always use super glue for them. It seems to work. If you're worried about it, you can use five minute epoxy or something. Another way that I used to do it is I'd actually slightly round something. So it was just a little bit rounded. And then when you used a hammer to lightly tap it in, it's gonna put it just below the surface. So we're just gonna put super glue in the hole. You don't wanna put a lot because you're gonna spread it around the sides. And if you have too much in there, the pressure of all that liquid in there is gonna keep the magnet from getting seated down flush. And then you're just gonna push it in there with your putty knife. And if you push it down and slide off, your magnet's gonna stay flush. You can see I have too much super glue in there. See how it's coming out like that? And then I just take my thumb, push it up, same thing slide it off. See, there wasn't too much super glue in that one. One of the things to note is the depth of your holes. It doesn't really matter if you use this technique because they're gonna be up towards the top. Obviously, you don't wanna go super deep because it causes a problem. Then you just, if we have one that's sticking out, just give it a little tap with something rounded. That's gonna make it stay down. And then I like to wipe any excess super glue so I don't have to sand it off later. And then just hit it with a little bit of activator. It's gonna seal it up and you're done. And now you have two perfectly flush magnets, which are gonna be super strong. I'm gonna show you what this does here in a minute, but let's look at some of the ways we use these magnets. So obviously you guys know the Cat's Moses dovetail jig. It uses magnets to guide a handsaw. So when you think about magnets in the shop, one of the easiest things to use it with is hand tools that cut. And so 
One of my favorites is a chisel guide. You can take your chisel, put it right into your marking knife line when it's time to go down to the line, and then you just hook your 90 degree block with a magnet in it. And when you know it's square, because you know your marking knife line is square to whatever it is you're cutting, because you did that with a square, you'll also know when your chisel is 90 degrees up and down because your block sits flat and your chisel stays in the marking knife line. So you can take it, use it just like a chisel guide, it works great. Now this works for 90 and 45 as well. So if you were cutting something with a 45 and you needed to pare it down with a chisel, you could use a block just like this. One of my favorite uses for magnets is shop jigs. Now here's a couple cutting guides that I made that have been great over the years for using a handsaw and getting great cuts. This is one that I made that is also a shooting board, works great. It's actually like the third video I ever put out on YouTube, but I will link both of these. This one is a much better video, much newer video. Uh, and it's got two cutting guides on it. It's got a 45 with magnets. so you can just pop your saw in there and get a perfect cut and then you can flip it around and i've got this piece because if you want you can bring it in to uh encapsulate the saw if you really want to make sure you go the extra mile there just like that super easy to use you get perfect 90 and 45 degree cuts another thing that magnets can do is they can help you stay square here was something i made years ago that i still use from time to time it helps you keep your hand plane square. It's got little notches depending on which side of your hand plane you're using it on so that this doesn't interfere with the blade. And it just hooks up to your hand plane like that and you've got a 90 degree fence and it allows you to just quickly and accurately get 90 degree cuts. Lastly, throwing a couple on the side of your workbench is a great thing to do. You can stick tools that you wanna stay out of the way there. These magnets are so strong, they'll hold a chisel. In fact, they're so strong, look at this. This is a hold fast. This is solid steel, look at this. It's gonna hold that, no problem. These things are so strong. This will hold 15.2 pounds with these two magnets. We're gonna head over to the drill press, which there's a hundred uses for magnets over there. But ways I use magnets over here at the table saw is I'll throw some on the push stick. You can just stick it to your rail there. And this is something from MagSwitch. We're actually gonna start carrying these soon. I don't have them up on the store yet. But these work great on your cast iron as stops, especially if you're cross cutting and you don't wanna use your fence because that's dangerous as your stop. You can just take one of these, put it right where you want it to go and use that as your stop and then make your cross cut. So it's a couple good uses for magnets over here on the table saw. I always keep a couple right here on my table saw fence in case I need it for something or I wanna stick something on there that I don't wanna have any risk falling off. So over at the drill press is one of the places that magnets really shine. Now there's, here's a bunch of different things we do like glue a magnet to a pencil. This is one I made years ago. Here's like some old crappy magnets that have been sitting up here, but I just throw drill bits on them. And then the best one is the, the chuck for your drill press. It's just always right there. You never lose it. You're never looking for it. Super easy way to do it. Let's head over to dust collection. Let me show you something really cool. Okay, so this is one of my favorite tips I've ever learned, and it changed the game for me on dust collector bag changing. So see these magnets here on the bag? Anybody who's ever used one of these bags knows that it's so hard to keep the bag up and get this clamp around it and tighten it without everything falling apart. So just take a couple magnets, it'll hold your bag up and it's really easy to put on your uh, bag clamp. So here's a good one. Uh, if you put one, a magnet on the inside of your shop vac, you can just glue it or use some epoxy. It's gonna pick up any metal pieces that are in your sawdust. And here's like a little bonus tip too. If you ever drop something behind your workbench or maybe you just got bad knees and you don't wanna bend over and pick it up, take a magnet, put it on the end of your tape measure and you can go ahead and pick up anything that you drop down below your workbench. One of my absolute favorite tricks with magnets, and you don't need a stack like this, you could use just one, is a stud finder. Because drywall is screwed and nailed into studs, and that's the only place that there's gonna be metal in your wall except for conduit. But conduit's gonna run this way so you can kind of check. So you can, instead of buying one of those stupid electronic stud finders that are a pain in the butt to use, you can just use a magnet and look for a screw. And once you find a screw, you can check that it goes up and down by finding another one and you know exactly where your studs are. Let's head over to the bench for one last tip. Okay, last really great tip is for heat absorption. So when you are using a card scraper a lot, it can build up a lot of heat on your thumbs. 
So you can just take a couple of magnets and use them to put your thumbs on when you're bending your card scraper. One other place that I've used them is secret compartment furniture. It's a lot of fun to use magnets to do that. In fact, I made some secret compartment nightstands a couple years ago that I still use and love uh, that had a really cool magnet locking system. If you wanna get these magnets strongest in the world for their size, they're over on my website. I'll link them down below. Make sure you go check out tomorrow's jig that we released today. Fits nine of the most popular trim router bases uh, and does a ton of cool things. I'll link that launch video down below as well. Guys, as always, stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.